Welcome back to Brandon Farm. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here hanging out with us, watching our videos and sticking around. For those of y'all that know that my past two videos, I had a worm farming presentation. Well, I did my worm farming presentation and now I want to post it for you to watch. So this is my intro to my worm farming presentation. This was with my horticulture club. So the Wise County Horticulture Club. Um, this was April 20th. So I'm going to go ahead and post that here. We're doing it all on a very small scale, I should say. Um, so a little bit of background on me. Um, I worked at every nursery in town, um, plant shed, um, all of them, Ace Hardware, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, all of them. I went to Tarleton State University and I got my degree in horticulture and landscape management. Um, and then I decided I was gonna go work for FedEx. So I actually drive for FedEx um, and we moved out to Boyd a couple years ago, and I decided I wanted to get more into plants and compost and worms and all of it. So that's what we did. So we are on a very, very small scale. So I want to start off with defining worm farming. What is worm farming? So vermicomposting is the technical term for worm farming, and this will be on part one of our little handout if you got it. Um, refers to the use of the worms to convert the waste materials into a hummus-rich soil additives or natural fertilizers. So it's the byproduct of worm composting, consisting of worm castings, microorganisms, and unprocessed organic materials. It can be harvested and used to improve the quality of the soil, which provides essential nutrients for growing your plants. Um, worms play a very essential role in your plants, in your soil in the health of all of that combined. Um, permaculture is just simply the, the culture of worms, um, which is kind of what I'm doing. The act of raising, hatching, and breeding earthworms. Why do I worm farm? Well, I started worm farming because I heard about it on social media from a girl named Jess Sowers. Um, her handle is um, Roots and Refuge. And she got into worm farming because she was trying to fix her soil that was in her greenhouse that she had bought that had a bunch of chemicals in it and it was killing her plants. It was basically just tainted. And so one of the ways that she wanted to remedy that was worm farming and adding those worms into her compost to get all of those bad things out so that way she can grow healthy plants in her, in her garden. So that got me interested in it. So it's, it's super interesting to me and it's very easy. It's very hands-off. It's very, um, you set it up and you just let it go. You feed it once a week and you're good to go. Um, and it produces so many good things for you. It's very beneficial. On to the benefits of worm farming. Essential for healthier, richer soil. Altering the soil structure, nutrient dynamics, plant growth, and movement of water. They excrete waste or poop in the form of casts. Casts are a type of soil aggregate. Soil aggregate um, can play an essential role in protecting the soil from wind and water erosion. So they're in there and they're, your composting worms will go up and then they'll go down, um, making those tunnels, making it easier for the water to go in and out of your soil and adding those nutrients by the form of casts. Um, it increases your microbial activity, um, so that way your plants can absorb it quickly and easily. So one of the questions I like to ask is what are your goals? What are your goals in worm farming? Because you can't just, like I said, set it up and then leave it forever. You have to have a goal for it. What do you want from it? Do you want castings? Do you want compost? Do you want worm tea? There's so many things that you can do with your worms. And I want to do it all. Um, part three. So this is what kind of composting worms. Um, in this blue folder here, I actually
actually took a worm farming course with a woman named Natalie. Her handle is Hey, It's a Good Life. Um, I paid for this course, and in here she's got a whole list of different kinds of composting worms. I have two different kinds of composting worms. I have the red wigglers, and I have the European night crawlers, which are the two that are in bulk. The red wigglers are the best species for vermicomposting. They can eat half their weight in food daily. They're very efficient at breaking down that decaying organic matter. The night crawlers are a cousin to the red wigger. They're much larger. They can survive underwater for long periods of time. Now, why that's relevant, I'm not quite sure. And for fish, and fish. There you go. <laughs> and you can also sell your worms for fishing. Um, you'll find them burrowing in compost piles or piles of manure. There's two other ones I want to mention, are the red tiger and the blue worms. The blue worms are actually in tropical regions. I do not have either one of those. I only have the red wigglers and the European nightcrawlers. And they're doing well. That was doing great. Um, where I got my worms, I actually got mine from Mimi's Worms. And I have her website right on here. Um, right underneath is Miss, or, I'm sorry, Uncle Jim Worm Farm. And he's got worms as well. Um, I just felt like it was easier with Mimi's. It was quicker on shipping. They come in a little cardboard box. You open it up and you get them started. It's that simple. They ship your own? I think so. Okay. I could be wrong on that. I can check. Yes. But she's got a great website with so much information. So I would definitely reference that. Um, okay, so your materials needed for a worm farm. Obviously, you need some sort of bin. Now, there's several different kinds of bins. Um, I actually have two different kinds of bins. I have a stacking bin, which is, I brought the diagrams, couldn't bring the whole bin, it's kind of heavy. Um, so it's just a three-tiered stacking system. It's got little compartments. So I just, what I do is I'll pull one off and then I'll set it up with my layers and I'll show you how to do all that because we're going to set up a worm farm today. Where did you get your bin? We're going to raffle it off. I got this one at walmart.com, funny enough. I know, it was the cheapest. And it was the most aesthetically pleasing because, you know, I want it to look nice. Right? I mean, hey. Yep. So that's why I got it. Uh, that's my girl. Um, but it was on sale and, and, you know, it worked out. You keep that inside. So, so we're going to go over that too. But I keep mine actually in the garage. And I've kept them in several different places. And I finally think I found the right spot for them to survive and thrive. So they're actually in the garage. So I have a stackable worm bin. Like I said, I got this off of Walmart. And I also have just a regular traditional bin. By traditional bin, I just mean like one of these bins. But what I have is one of those big cattle cube buckets. The Purina buckets. That's what I have my big worms in. Lick tub. <clears throat> Isn't that a lick tub? Yes, I think so. Well, the cattle cubes. Yeah. Lick tub. Anyway, it's a big Purina bucket. Um, but the problem with that is it's so big and it's so heavy that it's hard to harvest. Mm -hmm. And so I really like having the three-tiered system if you're going to do it on a smaller scale, like say in an apartment or, you know, if you have just a room you want to put it in or if you want to keep it in your kitchen, you can keep it anywhere. Um, that's what I would recommend is starting with a stackable bin because it's just easier to manage um, and harvest. Um, there's also a flow-through system, which one day, mark my words, I will have a flow-through system. So basically, it's like the size of this table, and you build it out of wood, and on the bottom, it's just PVC runners. And when you harvest, you're scraping the bottom, because all of your castings and compost will sink to the bottom, and all your worms will rise to the top, because you're feeding them on the top. So one day, I will have a flow-through system. Another system that you can do that I'm not 100% familiar with, but it sounds mind-blowing to me, is where you would section off a piece of your earth, like in your backyard or your garden or wherever, and you would basically have free-range worms. They call it a worm bed. And you just let them do their thing. <coughs> now, how you would harvest that, I'm not 100% sure, so I haven't, I haven't gone down that section yet. But your materials needed, so you need a bin. You would need shredded cardboard, grit. Um, grit is in the form of sand, dirt, vermiculite, or perlite. Water, preferably unchlorinated. Now I'm guilty. I don't always use unchlorinated water. I know I should. But it's just easy to water it with the hose. OK? 
okay, they're, they're there, they're surviving, they're, they're doing great. Um, but unchlorinated is best. Um, paper, straw, leaves, leaf mold, coconut core, peat moss, cover plants, and wood chips. Most of that I have today to set up our worm bin. Um, I, over there at the table, got one of these little cards. I put on the back of this a bunch of different tips and tricks um, of mine, and from, actually from my worm course here, on how to layer your worm farm, what to feed, what not to feed, and then what grits, greens, and browns are. So when I'm talking about this stuff, it's all right here on this little cheat sheet for you to take home. Okay, so part five. Things to think about when you're setting up your worm farm. Where are you going to keep your worm farm? You want to keep it out of direct sunlight. Um, the goal is to keep your worms above 40 degrees. Someplace cool, ideally between 60 and 80 degrees. Um, someplace with good airflow. Like I said before, I keep mine in the garage. I've kept them on my front porch, but it got too hot and it fried up. I know. <laughs> it was so sad. I actually started a worm bin in a five gallon bucket. And I kept it on the porch and it got too hot and it killed all of my worms. It was devastating. But I had other ones, so it wasn't that bad. It was a learning moment. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm all about. If you notice, my, my whole logo is Grow Messy. And Grow Messy just means to get in there and do it. Even though it's messy, even though you don't know what you're doing, even though you don't have the confidence in it yet, if you grow messy, you get in there and you just go for it. You're learning something. Even if you fail or if you succeed. So that's Grow Messy. So that was my learning moment in a five-gallon bucket. Um, I've kept them in the garage, I've kept them on the back porch, I kept them in the house for a while. Now in the house, with my big Purina bucket, it does not have a lid. So I had an issue with like gnats and bugs and my kids getting in it, and I was like, no, this is not gonna happen. <laughs> so we ended up moving it into the garage, and I keep it on an interior wall. I don't put it on my exterior walls because they get too hot. Um, so the bigger the bin, the more you have as far as uh, temperature control. So if you have a bigger bin, there's more on the bottom that would be cooler. If you have a smaller bin, then it's going to get hot fast. Uh, but both my bins, my stacking bin and my big bin, are both right there on the interior wall. And they're doing great. Okay, um, so if you're in cooler temperatures, um, insulating your bin, keeping it indoors, you can pre-soak shredded newspaper and then add your dry on top. Here's another one that I haven't done, is you can dig a hole in the earth, like in your garden or in your backyard, and you can actually bury your worm farm. So in this case, if you had a regular traditional bin, you would bury it up to here. So you can actually pull it out if you need to harvest it. But that'll regulate your temperature. The earth will actually regulate the temperature, which is great if you can do that. Um, warmer temperatures, so we live in Texas, it's hot, it gets super hot. So keeping it in a shady spot out of the sun, again, you can bury it into the earth. You can also add ice cubes when it's really, really hot. What I like to do is I'll freeze my food scraps. Um, typically when I get on a health kick, I have a juicer <laughs> and I'll juice everything. Well, everything that comes out, I freeze it. And then I'll give that to my worms in the summer. So it works out great because it's cold, they're hot, they're getting fed. It works. Okay, so part six is layering your worm farm. Y'all ready for this? So when you have it in the ground, mm -hmm. are ant, those fire ants getting at them? Any ants? I there? suppose they could. It's probably be something that you want to keep an eye on. But I haven't had an, an issue with ants getting into them. Okay. But I also haven't had them in the garden. Mm -hmm. So I had an issue with ants getting in my chicken coop. That was fun. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are going to actually set up our worm farm. So this is the worm farm I'm actually raffling off. Uh, and the worm farm that hopefully one of you guys can take home and love. Alright, so on the back of that card, it tells you how to layer your worm farm. Also, I want to show you in this book, the Natalie book. Very um, educational. This book is actually meant for um, homeschool. So if you homeschool, if you know somebody who wants to homeschool, this is a very good resource for that. She's got a lot of pages in here, vocabulary, everything. 
But this page in particular, this is where she has a diagram of all of her layering pieces, okay, and what you're going to put in them and how deep they're going to be. So she has them starting with a paper bag. Now, I have a paper bag today, but sometimes I don't. So what else can I use? I can use cardboard. You just want to layer that cardboard right on the bottom. That's going to be your first layer. So in between your layers, I have a note on the back of that card that says to water your layers. So I have my water here, and I'm just going to put some water in here. Is that funny? Um, Sorry. <laughs> almost 24 hours. <laughs> but yes, no, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Okay, so then your browns. So on the back of the card, what do we have for browns? We have leaves, shredded cardboard, paper, packing paper, and newspaper. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so I've got leaves, I've got grass clippings, I've got heat moss, I've got shredded cardboard, my packing paper, and I've got compost. So that's what I'm going to use. So we're going to start with this shredded paper. So I bought a shredder, pretty cheap shredder, off of Amazon. And I make my husband sit down in the shop and I make him shred paper. <laughs> so if you've got kids or a <laughs> husband that needs something to do, that's what I do. And it works. Now this one being that it's kind of on the smaller side, I'm not going to go specifically off this two inch of browns because I'll really run out of space. So this one is going to be a small scale or farm, something that you can harvest easily and quickly. And I'm going to go over how to harvest everything as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of this. I'm going to the paper and really just kind of just layer it up and just layer it up. And then in between, you want to add the water. Now when your worm farm is sitting, i.e. in your garage or in your house or on your porch or wherever you decide to put it, you want to make sure that your moisture level is still maintained. You want a good moisture level because worms do not like the dry garden. So in here I just have organic compost. And actually I've mixed some of my own compost into this so it's rich, very rich, um, nutrient dense. And then you want to add your food scraps and your grip. So for food scraps, I want to go over what to feed your worms and what not to feed your worms. So what not to feed your worms, very important. Garlic, meat, bones, dairy, citrus, oil, onions, spice, and nightshades or diseases. So what do you feed your worms? You feed them your soft fruits. Banana, that's going bad. Works great, they love it. Avocado, they love it. Um, coffee grounds, your pumpkin, cornmeal tea bags that are compostable. Um, not the ones that you know, don't decompose. Uh, oatmeal, veggie pills, root veggies, and healthy plants. And the avocado can be the peel into everything. See? And it's crazy because when I'm going to go through seeds, are... yep. So I've also got some celery here that I'm going to put in here. So I've got the banana and I've got the celery, and all you're going to do is push it down. And sure. What about like cedar and pine? Um, what was the question? Like cedar which, or pine? Like, is that wood shavings that you're talking about? Like in mulch? Uh, we just get a lot of uh, pine needles that fall, and um, we also got to check out. I mean, you can use composites as well. You might. The only thing I can think of is that the pine needles have a lot of acidity, right. and I don't know if it would be too acidic for the worms. Mm -hmm. okay. That might be a good question. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Do you put the avocado seed in here? I throw it all in. They love the avocado. And it's okay. creepy. Whenever you go to pull back to feed them, and I'll talk about how to pocket feed and all of that. But when you pull back that soil and you see them all just in there, and truthfully, you see this is from there? 
Sometimes it does. Yeah, I was going to say, the secret probably is But it'll, it'll decompose because yeah. it's underneath everything. It's not on the top. And if it is on the top, well, then you just push it back down. It's all good. Um, they're not actually eating the food, in case you didn't know. Uh, they're eating the microorganisms that are breaking down that organic material. It's crazy. It's not a really good <laughs> So when I ordered my worms, Mimi's worms sent me worm chow. Now, worm chow, there's a whole bunch of different recipes on worm chow. Um, I'm actually trying to get into making my own worm chow on a larger scale once I get my big flow through system and I can feed my own worms. Um, but you can use all kinds of stuff, cornmeal, oatmeal, um, flour, and ironically, uh, chicken feed, like the chicken crumbles, which I already buy chicken crumbles. So it's like, it's a win-win, it's, you know, it's double. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this in here. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of layer of that. And now grit. Okay, so grit, um, like I said before, you can use sand, perlite, vermiculite, or just like fine dirt. Um, this is actually perlite, um, just because I have a big old bag of it that I got from the Decatur Garden Center. So I'm gonna put some of that in there. Not a sponsor. <laughs> but I love it, I'm saying. And she was so nice. Yeah, we, were there. we were there before we came here. I love it. <laughs> she just got a big old truck in, didn't she? Yeah, we did. We did. Because the theory is when you feed them, you want to push your food down and cover it with ground. And I just think, you know, it's easy just to cover it with the leaves. Because I can pull back the leaves to harvest or pull back the leaves to feed and then just push them like that. <coughs> so we've got the peat moss. Now we're going to do some compost. I'm going to add some water. I want to make sure it's really moist. I checked my worm farm today in my big Purina bucket before I came just to check it. And it was on the dry side. So if your worm farm is on the dry side, just take a hose, take your uncoordinated water, and just drench it. I mean, you don't want them swimming or anything, but. Um, so another thing that you might, might ask is, do you need holes in the bottom of your worm farm? And the answer is no, you don't. The only thing the holes are good for, in my opinion, is to know your moisture level. If it's sopping on the bottom, but what I do is I'll just pull back a section of my worm farm and I'll check the bottom. So if I've got a lot of water in there, I know I'm watering too much. If it's too dry, obviously I need to add more water. Okay, so compost. Collect them out of your yard if you've got trees. Okay, I can be setting this up and talking at the same time. So, we went over what to feed, what not to feed, so how to feed. So, like I said before, when I get on a health kick and I'm juicing and I have all those pieces that come out of the juicer, that's what I feed my worms. Um, they say you can make them smaller, you can blend them, you can chop them. Um, anything smaller that would just decompose faster would be good. Um, so depending on the size of your worms is how often you will feed them. My rule of thumb is once a week. If I feed my worms once a week, and I go back in there to go feed them, say, in a week, and there's still food scraps that are whole, and they haven't broken down, and they haven't been eaten, then I know they're not eating them. I either need to change what I'm feeding them, or maybe I fed them too much, and they're not, they don't like it. So I would cut back on what I'm feeding them. And if everything is gone and everything is decomposed, well then maybe I'm not feeding them enough. So if you have too much food in there they, and they don't eat it, they, they don't like it when you give them too much food? Well, they'll just take a long time to do it. They'll take a long time for them to eat it. But you don't want to over feed them. Because then that introduces rot, it introduces um, a smell. You never want your worm farm to smell bad. It should smell earthy. It should smell like good, healthy compost. That's what you want your worm farm to smell like. Alright, 
So there's a couple of different types of ways that you can feed your worms. Now, I only feed my worms one type of way just because I find it's the easiest, but I'm looking into feeding it another type of way because I think it's fascinating. So if you go to YouTube and you look up Captain Matt's worms, it's all worm people. He has so many YouTube videos on how he feeds his worms and all of his worm farms and everything, and it's just fascinating. He basically has a giant flow-through system, and he feeds his worms on the top. So all he does is he puts his worm chow or he his scraps right on the top, and then he covers it with a piece of like black plastic. And when he uncovers it, all of those worms are right there. You can see them all. <laughs> it is the coolest thing in the whole world, and I want that. But how I feed, since I have a smaller scale, is called pocket feed. When you pocket feed, you just want to pull back on the section of your piece, basically create a pocket, and then add your worm, uh, your scraps into there. <clears throat> Um, let's see. So once a week, your worm farm should not be smelly. Um, rule of thumb is to just lay eyes on your worm farm. That's all you can do, is to lay eyes on it and know what's happening in there. Because if you set it somewhere where you're not going to check it, you never know what's going to go on. And then either A, your worms are going to try to escape. And I've had some escape, and they die off because they have nowhere to go. Um, or they'll just dry up and then that'll be it. So you have to start over. So keeping an eye on your worm farm is best. Um, so how to harvest your worm farm. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning on the three bin system. It's way easier to harvest a three bin system than it is a big period of bucket. And basically what I do is I have this table and I will dump out that entire section I will sift out all of my worms. I'll put them in a separate bucket with compost or whatever I have um, to hold them. And then I will pull out anything that's like leaves, chunks of wood mulch, um, anything that's big that hasn't decomposed yet. I'll separate that and that'll now be my compost to add back into it. Um, and then after that, depending on what you want, if you want to do castings or if you just want your worm compost, after you pick up your worms and the big things, that would be your worm compost right there. That's it. That's all it is. It's that simple. If you want to go further and to make castings, and I have a bag of castings, I'll pass these around and seal them. They feel amazing. So these are the castings that I just harvested last week. Um, and to get the castings, my husband, my handy husband, built me this sieve. Now this is eight inch, I believe, and we just got the metal from Lowe's. And he built me a little frame that goes around it, and I will put that compost in here, and I will just move it around like this, and all that falls out is just straight castings, which is what's in that bag right there. And that is something that you can add to your garden, you can add it to your house plants, you can add it to your seedlings, you can add it to transplants, you can add it to your lawn, you can add it, depending on how large of a scale you want to do, it's very nutrient dense. Okay, so materials you would need, tables, bins, buckets, breaks, sieve, if you so choose. Um, separating everything and then making worm tea. So worm tea is another um, option you can do, so you can take your castings one step further and you can make the tea. Now I actually made compost tea, and I have a bunch more for sale for $5 if you want to. Um, these sell, this is a 16 ounce bottle, these sell for $16 to $18 at the farmer's markets, which is mind-blowing to me because it's just so simple for you to make it yourself. There's a bunch of different recipes you can use. Uh, people add stuff to this. I don't add anything to my compost tea. That's just straight castings and unsulfured molasses. Now for me, it is a two-day process. So what I do is I start by filling up a five gallon bucket with water, and you know my unchlorinated water issue, so I have to let it bubble. So I just got a bubbler off of Amazon, fish tank bubbler, and I let it bubble for 24 hours. After 24 hours, I will add directly into my bucket a five pound bag of worm castings, directly into my bucket. I will give that a good stir. I will actually take some of that water out into a smaller jar, and I will add two tablespoons of unsulfured black molasses. And I'll make sure that 
Now the reason I put it in a separate container is because molasses is heavy, right? It's thick. If I pour it into the five gallon bucket, it's gonna go straight to the bottom and it's gonna sit there so I'm gonna do what it needs to do. So the molasses is there to feed those microorganisms that are in the bucket, that are in the worm castings. So in that little bucket, I will mix it really, really well, and then I will add it into my five gallon bucket. And I will put my aerator back in there and I will let it bubble for another 24 hours. In this case, I actually filtered it twice because you don't want any like thick things in it, like particles, because for one, if you're going to put it in a sprayer, it's going to clog up your sprayer real fast, and it's going to be super frustrating, trust me, I know. Um, so I've actually filtered this twice with a 250 um, is the number, the magic number that I use on my filter, and it's actually like, I think it's like a coffee juice filter, and it's just like a funnel with a little filter in it. It works awesome. So I've actually bottled this, there are like 24 bottles of warm tea here. And I did test this product before I bottled it and I sprayed my entire garden and my seedlings. You're doing great. So do you dilute that? Yes. So the worm tea, this is a concentrate. So you would dilute it one part of the tea to 10 parts water. And then you can spray it out. No, Yeah. So not for human consumption. So, that rainwater would be probably best. Okay, so they wouldn't have to let that water. No, you can see that. Yes. I'm on city water. So, I have to make sure that's Yes, because you want that chlorine and the fluorine all out of it. You don't want to add those chemicals. So, is well water? Sure. Absolutely. end of the table here is a QR code. There's one in the back and there's one at the front. If you can scan it, it'll take you directly to her website. It is a discounted price for this course. Now, I'm not trying to sell it to you, but if you want some hand holding with your worm farm and you need more questions, she is a wonderful resource. And she will give you the confidence to start your own worm farm. So I'm going to pass this around for you guys to look at. And then, like I said, on the ends of the table, front and back, the QR code that you can scan. Some more resources are the these worms that you can on the website Apple Gym Worm Farm. And like I said, Captain Matt's Worm People, um, they are on YouTube and they have so many videos, so many resources. Um, another one I have is this book that I found really helpful and I'll pass this around too. It's just the Worm Farming 101. I got started off with Amazon. Any questions? So when you buy your worms, you just dump them on top, or do you have to actually put them in the way? So your worms, you want to add them on top. So you just buy them and put them on top? Yes, kind of. So you don't want them on top, top, like the very top layer, because you want them covered. You want them protected. You want them to know that it's safe. Worms do not like light, they like the darkness, so they're going to immediately go down. Um, which is why I'm doing the layers here, so they've got something to break down and feed off of. Um, so in on this little cheat sheet here, I've got your worms on there, at the very almost very top. So you're going to pepper them with the browns, but they will go in second to last. So I pulled, and this is my worms from my worm farm, um, my red wigglers and my. European night colors. I pulled probably 30 to 35 worms. It's a good size for something like this. 
So that's a good question. So they will multiply if they have the space. If they run out of space, they stop multiplying. And they just do your composting situation. And so they'll get back. If you put dirt in there, then they Yes. If there's one. Yes. They decide. <laughs> they decide. Is it important to not put your hands in there and mess it Oh, no. It doesn't matter if you want to throw the eggs and then hurt No, no, and that's another good question. So when you're harvesting, and it's in there, which we're on that page that she's on, when you're harvesting your worm bin, you will see cocoons, which is the worm egg. And it's insane. They look like little teeny tiny yellow beanies. And they have worms in them. And they will continue to multiply. And then you have little teeny tiny baby worms. Yeah. And then you got the big daddies. Oh. So, I mean, this is all different sizes and all different it's stages. It's not right. Nope. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's another very awesome. <laughs>
We add all your food scraps and compost. I didn't think I would, I was like skeptical, but it's just, it's easy, it's easy when you're trying to weed it, it's easy when you're trying to plant it. Now I will say it takes a lot of dirt to fill it up, and it's not just dirt when you want to put your, you know, your uh, leaves, your sticks, your mulch, everything else that you have in your, in your garden to fill it up, but it's been, it's been great. And when I went to plant my plants and I'm pulling back, there's worms, like, they're still there, they're still living there, hanging out, they love it. So they're leaving the water cage in the Uh-huh, that's where they feed from. Yep, we're going back to the front. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's get these worm guys in here. Oh, yeah. Could you do something? Could you use a waste bed, like we were doing veggies in, and just add worms to it, and just put food scraps in it? I suppose you could. Um, that would be under the, uh, like a worm bed. Maybe cover it with hay or leaves? Yeah, so you would just cover it. Um, just so, can I make you work for a minute if you have Sure, yeah. Yeah. Just saying not to bury your scraps. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and Are they dead? No. They're not dead. I don't think they're dead. No, they're dead. <laughs> nope, they're moving. They're moving. They are alive and moving. And you can see the cardboard that I had used because I had just reset it. Because mm -hmm. they haven't totally broken it. Down <laughs> yet. Uh -huh. You could put those in the That was just a tray. Yes. So this is the tray cardboard. It's got mulch, it's got leaves, it's got your grit. All the worms that are in here. I like for
Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, it was my first presentation. It was very nerve wracking for me. I did watch it back and I feel like I did okay being that it was my very first presentation. I have another one actually coming up in May and this one I might actually let friends and family <laughs> come to. <laughs> I was just, I was too nervous to even entertain the idea of somebody going that I knew. So, um, yeah, anyway, thanks for hanging out with us and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you like our channel. And if you do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, comment so I can talk to you and we can have a conversation about chickens, worms and gardening. Uh, anyway, we'll see you later.